You text him. Thank you. All right. <laughs> I don't know if y'all know this, but uh, me and my mother-in-law will sit around the dinner table and we will solve all the world's problems. Y'all ever do that? Y'all don't ever sit around the dinner table? It, it is a habit my wife is trying to get me to do is to, to sit at the table. Now, when we go visit her family, that's what we do. We sit at the table and we solve all the world's problems. We do. My mother-in-law will ask me questions. Now she's Catholic. But she'll ask me questions, such as the school shooting. What do I think the solution for that would be? She said, do you think stricter gun laws is going to be the thing that's going to do it? I'm not being rude. You know, you're, you're a cop, okay? So you know as well as I do. Laws ain't going to help. If a law would help, let's make it illegal to kill somebody. I, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm not making light of a situation. I'm, I'm not cracking a joke. I'm being serious. And that's what we were talking about. The only way anything's going to turn around, the only way anything's going to get better, if this country gets on its knees, it prays to God, it repents of its sin, people start reading God's Word, this is the only way. Amen. Now I know every time I get up here I seem to be a real pessimistic speaker. That is part of my personality. I look on the dark side of everything. I, I see the world the way it is. I mean, I can't, I can't turn on the news. I, I watch little, little pieces. Well, five, ten minutes tops, and then I'm, okay, that's enough of the craziness. That's enough of the, the world gone crazy. Because it will bring me down. About two weeks ago, I text Aaron. I always text Aaron throughout the day, especially when I'm down or something. I'll text him, I'll text Chad, I'll text random people. And um, he sent me his sermon that he preached that Wednesday night. Now, when thinking about what to preach, I, I really wanted to preach in Philippians. I really wanted to cover Philippians too. Really comfortable with that passage of Scripture. I wanted to preach that. Things kind of changed. I wind up with Psalms 119, 161. Now, that's the same passage that Aaron preached over. staring at the world, watching the TV and watching the news and just seeing how things are. This is, this is what we need. Princess has persecuted me without a cause, but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. I rejoice at thy word as one that finds the great spoil. No matter how dark the situation is, no matter what goes on, as you see right here, the writer talks about, he's not even worried about the princes that persecute him. He's looking at God's Word. He stands amazed at God's Word. The more troubles we have in life, the more worries we have in life, the more we need to turn to God's Word. This book is going to tell us everything. I always like it, people, uh, especially new parents, will say, you know, kids don't come with an instruction manual. There's an instruction manual. The sad thing is, is us guys do the same thing we do whenever our wife buys something and we have to assemble it. We, we don't use the instruction manual. Anybody guilty of that? Yeah. I, I, I thank God for Brother Jameson and for his wife and they're sending out devotions. Anybody get devotions from them? It kind of makes you remember, I need to read today. And every now and then I get behind I do. I'm guilty of it. I get too busy. But I like this. It says, I rejoice at thy word. This writer, he's getting excited at God's word. As one that findeth a great spoil. There's a great treasure. Everything that we're ever going to know about God, we're going to find out from God's word. Yep. Any situation, we're going to find out from God's word. How we should act. What we should do. One of them verses that I have such a hard time with, you know, pray for them that curse you. Yeah. 
I'm not the only one that has troubles with that, okay? I have to, you know, it's Matthew, I think, 544. I have issues with that. I say, ah, I've worked on it through the years. A lot of praying. God, let this guy quit talking so that I don't speak. But, you know, it tells us to pray for our enemies, pray for our loved ones. How often do we do that? How often do we read God's Word and not just be hearers, not come to church and just hear the preaching and the teaching of the Word of God, but actually apply it to our lives? Where we hear pastor get up, he preaches a message, and it motivates us to get out and to do something. Jameson talked about looking for ways to serve this morning in the devotion. Or am I a day behind? Okay, making sure you were giving me that look. That's what we got to do. We got to get in the Word of God. We got to read. We got to find out what God wants us to do. This passage of Scripture right here, it just. Every time I'm down, every time I'm depressed, I'll, I'll text Aaron, I'll text one of my friends, I'll talk to one of my friends, I'll talk to Pastor, and what do they do? They give me Scripture. Scripture is our answer. Prayer is our answer. And we're going to turn back a few pages. Psalms 46. I was reading through this yesterday and reading through this throughout the week, but reading through it yesterday, I said, you know, do FBI. When we got FBI, fall semester is going to be kicking off. Recommend people doing that, you know. It's not going to hurt to, to learn and study God's Word. Okay, I'm going to put a little plug out for there. But I was reading that Wilmington's Guide as I was going through this, and um, it talks about this passage here. And it says that Psalms, uh, see I'm stumbling my words too. Psalms 46 may become the favorite psalms of the frightened Israelite um, that may hide from the Antichrist in Petra during the last terrible period of the Great Tribulation. That's pretty much what it had to say about that. But we look at this psalm, it says, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Everything we're going to learn about God, we're going to learn about it from His Word. God is our refuge. So many times we, we see people, we have, they have a problem. And I'm guilty of this. I left the church for several years. Completely fell out of church and just backslidden as all can get out. People will get mad. Something will happen. They will leave God. They will leave the church. God is our refuge. God is our safe place. He is our haven. He is our harbor of safe. That is who we need to turn to when we have a problem. Like, well, I would say Rochelle, but she don't like me. Like me and Rochelle, we have a problem. You know, she tells me I'm stupid and I can't read well. I, I, sh I shouldn't get mad. It, it's funny, but this is, this is a petty thing that people get mad about. Now, honestly, if, if she doesn't walk up and tell me I'm stupid and I can't read well, I think I've done something wrong. <laughs> but people will turn from God. They'll get mad. They'll say, God, why are you forsaking me? God's just mad. And they'll, they'll turn and they'll leave. The Bible says He's our refuge and our strength. People say, well, I just I can't deal with that person. That's what Rochelle says. I just can't deal with Joey. Go to Him. Pray for Him. Pray for strength. He is our strength. We can't do anything unless God helps us. Amen. And I love this. A very present help in trouble. I mean, as soon as we're in trouble, we can turn to God. We can sit there and we can look at the situation and say, is this problem I have and is it because of something I've done? Have I sinned? Have I done something bad? If so, pray to God. It says He is faithful and just to forgive us. If it's not something you've done, pray to God, what do you want me to learn? What do you want me to change in my life? Am I going through this trouble? Am I going through this trial? Am I going through this because you're trying to change me? Are you trying to correct something in my life? 
So many times we see people go through troubles. I had a friend whenever he was uh, 23 years old. He lost his wife. Okay, 23-year-old man lost his wife. She was 25 at the time. And he made it through. And everybody marks, how? How did you go through that? How did you stand, lose that? Seven-month-old baby, too, when she died. Day before Thanksgiving. First Thanksgiving for the baby. Everybody stands and they watch. And they see his reaction. Everybody says the same thing. How'd you do it? He said, I couldn't. He says, waking up every day and it's relying on God. He knew he'd get in his Bible, he'd read. He knew God was his refuge. He knew God was his strength. He knew if he was going to make it through that day, that one day, just one day at a time, it was going to be relying on God. So many times we, we save prayer as a last resort. You know, you'll hear the doctors come in and they'll say, well, all there's left to do is to pray. What if we actually just prayed before we had a problem? I mean, I, I can see the way things are going. I can see in the future I'm going to have a, a tough decision to make. I know this. Maybe within the next five years. Major life change. I'm praying about it now. I'm praying that God will, will open my eyes and let me see the path that He wants me to go down. What does He want me to do? I'm praying for God's will. So many times, you know, prayer, it's, it's, it's always the last thing on our mind. But praying for individuals, praying for the people in our church. We've got unity. We've got a great group of people in this church. We've got so many people that just want to help, so many good people. We need to continue to pray for our church and pray that we still have unity. We need to pray for everybody. You remember we had to print out the prayer list to get people in the habit of praying. Praying for the different ministries. Praying for the, for the individuals in the church. I know, I'm kind of going off left here. It'll be okay. We'll get somewhere eventually. But this is what we need to do. If this church is going to grow, we're going to have to pray. If this church is going to stay healthy, we're going to have to pray. We're going to have to pray for each other. We're going to have to read God's Word. I'm going to take Connor. I mean, I'm going to pray for you. you. You've got a job nobody wants. I mean, I, don't know. I hate to say it. Pray for his wife. She's married to Connor. That's weird. We always have to do that. Pray for the, for the wife. She's married to the husband. You know. But pray. But this is that a very present help in trouble. It makes me think of Peter. You remember whenever Jesus was out on the water and Peter sees him. He says, you know, Lord, if that's you, bid me to come. God tells him, Come. So he obeys the Lord and he starts walking. He's walking on water. That'd be so cool. I'd love to be able to do that. You know, all them waves and that storm, all that's under Jesus' feet. All them troubles, it's, it's beneath Jesus. He's got control. He takes his eyes off of Jesus. He looks at the situation he's in. He starts to sink. He didn't do a long, huge prayer. He didn't. He just, Lord, save me. And immediately... So many times we're in trouble. And we don't have to go through so much trouble if we just right then stopped and prayed to God. There's been times where I've had troubles. And I'm, Lord, I don't know what I did wrong. Is there a sin that I've done? I've had to pray and I've had to study and I've talked to people and find out, yeah, I messed up. Pray to God. Repent. Turn from that sin. But I love it. He is our refuge. He is our strength. The very present of hell. Therefore, will not we fear though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake and swell thereof, Salah? Why should we worry? Though anything happens to us, any situation, why should we worry? God is in control. 
There's a river, the stream thereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. Shall she not be moved? God shall help her. And that right early, the heathens raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melts. God created everything with his voice. He spoke everything into existence. That is how powerful our God is. He can pull us through anything. He can see us through anything. It's what we have to remember. The Lord of hosts is with us. God of Jacob is our refuge. Salah. Now, I'm going to turn, turn a few pages. Hebrews 13, verse 5. It says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. God is with us. What do we have to fear? Win, lose, or draw. We're a child of God. Win, lose, or draw. If you're saved, you know Jesus is your Savior. If you go out and you do something for God and it kills you, is that the worst thing that could happen? I mean, all of a sudden you're in glory, you're with God. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure the news in heaven is a lot better than the news on earth. God is with us. First John 4.4 4, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. See, when we sit and we spend time in God's Word and we read the Scripture and we see God's with us. God wants us, believe it or not, to have a good life. God has a perfect will for us. If we lived our lives the way God wanted us to live our lives, our lives would be so much better. Yep. I mean, I told y'all before, I, I had a plan whenever I got out of high school. You like this, Connor. I had, I had it all figured out. I mean, we're in the middle of, uh, well, just two years into the Afghanistan war, I believe. Yeah, I was going to join the Marine Corps. I was going to try for sniper school. I was going to be a Marine. I was going to go to college, become an engineer, and I was going to move to New York City. That's brilliant. Now, I've been to New York City, just for the record. They didn't understand me. They told me to please speak English. When I boarded that plane going to Germany, they looked at me and said, what country are you from or how would you like your visit to America? This, this was the, the life I had figured out. This was the plan I had figured out. This was the will I had figured out. Okay? God had a different plan. God did stuff to get my attention because I was rebellious. I ran from God. It took a, a truck or car. I think it was a blue pickup. Remember that. We're going to find them. Blue pickup hit me. It was a hit and run. Left me for dead in a ditch. That stopped me from being a Marine. Sit there and thought, oh, everything's over. How much better is my life now? I've got a really good church home. These people, y'all are family. I got a wife, I got kids. Would I have that if I'd have done, would I would I have everything? No. I'd probably be a wicked, ungodly sinner living in New York and voting really stupid. God has a will. He has a plan. You have not because you ask not. People say, Well, how do I find the will of God? Pray. Read your Bible. See, to fix the world's problems, like me and my mother-in-law was talking about, more people going to have to read their Bible. They're going to have to see what is sin. They're going to have to see basic knowledge. Yeah. I told you all before, this, this, was, this was my grandpa's school book when he was in school. It was a Bible. 
he had an old kerosene lantern, and that whenever it was come to reading, that's what they did. When it come to history, that's what they did. Did they do that when you were in school, Brother Dean? He has a few years on you, but that, that's what he always told me. Was, that was the, the textbook they had on reading and everything. Because they were going to raise up kids out of that school. And he went to Bonob School back then. I guess it was Bonob was still there. But anyways, he went to that school. That was, that was the book they used. Oh, since everybody's turned away from the Bible and everybody says, oh, the Bible's outdated, we got 57 genders. Men can be with child. Yeah, I know. That's, that's crazy. But you look at a generation that was raised up believing the Bible. There was men that got out and they worked. They provided for the family. There was good children. The home life was better. Crime rate was down. People didn't want to go out and kill a bunch of people. Yeah, there were people that still did that, but everybody knew that man was created in the image of God. So it was wrong to kill man. Yep. But whenever you say that we're evolved from evolution, like Darwin says, and we're no different than mosquitoes, so what's the difference in going out and killing a bunch of people and killing a bunch of mosquitoes? We're just a higher rank on the evolutionary food chain. The country's in trouble. We're going to have to do our part. We're going to have to go out them doors. We're going to have to knock on doors. We're going to have to get our brothers and sisters who have left church for some reason or another. And we're going to have to bring them back in. Yep. We're going to have to tell them, God loves them. If you made a mistake, it's okay. Pray to God. Repent. Don't make that mistake again. Everybody in here has made a mistake. Everybody in here has failed. If you think you're a perfect person in here, then you've just sinned because you've got pride. But I think as families, I think we do need to sit around the dinner, dinner table more. Even if we're not eating. But actually reading the Bible. Discussing biblical things. That's going to be the solution. So you look at all this and you, and you see all the terrible things going on. We shouldn't fear. It's hard not to fear now. I mean, we could be on the brink of World War III. I don't know. Everybody's lost their mind. But we don't need to fear. We need to trust God. We need to draw closer to God. No matter what the trial, the tribulation, anything that we're going through, it should never push us away from God. It should never push us away from church. It should always draw us closer. Even if we don't know why we're going through it, we just need to draw close to God. Yep. We need to be like a little kid. We need to be like Paul the day that I was clearing out blackberries, big old huge blackberry bush. It was in the wrong place. It needed to be cleared out. I said, Paul, just stand by the wheelbarrow. You'll push the wheelbarrow. Okay, Dad. A little bit later, Dad, it's got me. What did I tell you? Sorry, Dad. Help him out. We need to have faith like that. He knows He knows the holler dad, even though he, he disobeyed me. That's the faith we need to have. We need to read our Bibles. It's amazing. I mean, you sit there, you read your Bible, you start learning about God. You read John chapter 4, you see that God is love. You see this right here, you see that God is our strength, our refuge, our help. Hebrews 13, 8, you see that Jesus is the same yesterday, today. I'm paraphrasing. I'm not reading different translations, sorry. But, uh, say some looks. But you see, God's the same. And one of my favorite verses, and I know it's an odd one, Numbers 23, 19. For God is not a man that he should lie. See, we know God can't change. Because if he got any holier, then that means he wasn't completely holy to begin with. God is a holy, righteous God. He can't lie. If he tells us something, it is true. And that's what we have to depend on is God's Word. But we need to spend more time in God's Word. We need to see more of what God wants us to do. We need to learn more about God. And you know, we could eventually maybe, maybe get to the point where we're like Psalms 119, 165. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. 
that we walk so close with the Lord and we love the Lord so much that we see people the way God does and we love people that it doesn't offend us. When her shell comes up and tells me I'm stupid or throws something at me, I should love her anyways. Why? Because God loves her. Yeah, you knew I was going to be preaching on you. You've been mean. But that's the way we should be. We shouldn't get offended. If somebody does something, forgive them. Sometimes people don't even know that, that they've offended you. I had a guy get mad at me because I didn't, I didn't say hi to him. I didn't hear him. Y'all know most of the time if I'm not looking at you, I can't hear you because I'm about death. And also a lot of times I, after the third time of saying what, I just nod my head. For all I know, I'm agreeing to sell everything to you for a dollar. But I found that I offended the guy and I apologized. I said, you know, make sure I'm looking at you so I can, you know, because a lot of times I'm buzzing by. But don't, don't get offended. Don't leave. Somebody rubs you the wrong way, pray for them. Pray for yourself. Lord, I don't know why in the world this person's annoying me, but Lord, help me. I mean, we prayed for Brother Jonathan over there. It's a good thing. He used to be a coke dealer. Sorry. We got a cough. I had to tell him. We need to spend more time in God's Word. We need to realize that God is our shelter. He is our refuge. He is our help. He is our strength. God is everything to us. And we need to treat Him that way. We need to put Him first. Remember the verse, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God should be first. When we do that, everything in our life is going to fall in place. You'll say, well, I, I prayed, and I've had this happen. I've had family members pray for them. They get better, they, and they die. I mean, my cousin, we, we prayed for her. That was back in 07. It's near Christmas time. Lord, let her live. Oh, the whole family prayed. She died. Sit there and be with my grandma, and my grandma wondering why. So God will have the greater good come out of this. We don't know what. At her funeral, four people got saved. Four people heard the gospel that probably would have never heard the gospel. Would have never surrendered because they were thinking about their own mortality. A year later, her sister died. Just a heart attack, just fell over. Once again, Grandma coming up, what have we done? What's our family done wrong that this is happening? I don't know. So we've got to trust God. Some more people got saved at her funeral. A few months later, my uncle died. A bunch of people heard the gospel that never went to church. There was a hundred people, about a, probably a hundred or so more people there at his funeral. Huge funeral. A lot of them never stepped foot in church. A lot of them never heard the gospel. They heard the gospel. Did anybody get saved? I don't know. I won't know until we get to heaven. Then a few months later, my aunt died. We look at tragedies. We look at it. Should I give up on praying because all these people I prayed for? No. I should keep on praying. But I should trust God and I should trust that God's going to have something better. And He did. I mean, I hate to say it. I miss them. I miss them all. But if you would ask them, would you rather lived or four people know the Lord is Savior, they would say, you know, hey, I'd rather people get saved. Every situation we're in, instead of looking at the black dot on the piece of paper, we need to look at the good. We need to not focus on the bad. We need to focus on God. Now there's some things we go through we'll never know. We won't know until we're dead. Lord, why would you send me through that? And then every one of us is going to feel like me, stupid and can't read well whenever God says, I sent you through that so that this would happen. 
And if you wouldn't have been went through that, it would have changed the outcome of all this. We've got to trust God. I hope there's some kind of a blessing or help, not the insane rambling of an insane man, but it was just something that was on my heart and something I just want to talk to you all about. I guess, um, Brother John, will you dismiss this place in prayer?